Hello, today I'm going to walk you through the first word lab. So, you're watching this video, so you got a textbook assignment, you've got a SAM assignment, and you've got this word lab, which I'm asking you to do. So, I like, uh, I think the things that I give you like this, these labs are your best resources by far, because uh, they don't exactly tell you every little step of what to do. And uh, you got to apply a little bit of judgment, which is how things work in the real world, as opposed to like SAM assignment where it's, you know, do exactly this and exactly this way. Uh, you know, there's value here, but, you know, it's, it's so structured that I prefer these. Textbook assignments are also pretty good. Uh, so anyways, if you're going to do this, you're going to need the data file. Now, don't mistake this with the data files. There's one set of data files that come with your textbook, and those are going to accompany these assignments. If I give you something created by my own hands, it's just going to be a data file like that. Here's the instructions. If I open the instructions, they look like this. Notice they're not super detailed. If I were you, I would uh, just try and do the step, and then I'd watch the solution video and then make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I mean, I don't know about that first step. That just says open up the thing, which is that thing. That's the data file. You should save it because you're going to turn it in. I'm not going to turn it in. I don't ever want to see it again, so I'm going to go open. But you should save it somewhere where you can actually find it. I'm just going to open it. And I don't know what kind of results you'll have because it kind of depends on your computer and the way it's set up. But I think it's pretty likely that you'll have to enable editing when you open up a Word document. That's just what happens when you get something from the Internet. It's, it's the idea that you could have possibly downloaded a virus or something. Uh, you're going to have to trust the stuff you get from me. Uh, that looks like that didn't go very well. It kind of didn't. I have two screens, so it just went over to my other screen. There's the document. All right, so it's kind of two pages. Let's talk about views for a minute. So one of the most fundamental things in Word uh, is views. So see down here, I am in print layout. Read is that view, which I don't think you probably like. And there's web layout, right? These are just same document, it just looks different. Now you notice how it's only uh, one page and it was two page a minute ago. That's because of this zoom bar here. Well, I think that's the best way to explain it. But you see, you can you can, uh, you can can change what is displayed on the screen. 100% is the most normal. But you see, you got these different views here. Mess around with them as you will. Uh, I think this is the one you're used to seeing. I, I think print layout's the most uh, valuable one, uh, especially if you're editing a document. All right, so I've got my ribbon up here. So I'm kind of going to walk through these steps. So the first thing is to download and open the computer violence document. There you go, it's called computer violence. That's the document. Next step is spell check the document, use your own judgment to correct the document. So step two. All right, so Word, and actually all of Office is about navigating the ribbon. Uh, you can right click and do a lot of things. I don't know, I'm just seeing what I have in here. Eh, right, I don't exactly have what I'm looking for. But uh, so these are tabs. Uh, the review tab is where you're going to go find your spelling and grammar, right? That's what you call a spell check. Um, yes, you are going to have to learn, you know, how the ribbon is organized. You'll notice there's quite a few tabs. Um, so this is a tab, this is a group, this is a group, this is a group. So like this is the home tab, this is the font group, this is the bold button. So everything has three steps to it. It's got a tab, a group, and a button. So we're under the review tab, we're in the proofing group, and I'm going to click on spelling and grammar. And I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not even gonna talk about what I'm doing. I got choices is here. I'm just gonna make some changes. Sometimes you gotta make a judgment call. Like, what did this person mean to spell? I'm not talking about it because I don't care what decisions you make. Just, just make some decisions. Uh, sometimes you have choices. And what's interesting is sometimes your spell uh, and grammar check might be a little different than mine, depending on the settings that you have with your word. I know it seems weird, but. Some things get lit up for some people that don't get lit up for other people. I know it's, it's, it's from where I'm sitting, it's not anything I can help you with, but I'm just telling I don't really care what decisions you made, just make some decisions. Now we are on to step three. Do a find and replace on the document, replace every instance of violence with kindness. All right, so this is actually going to be based on wherever your cursor is in the document. I think it's a good idea to put your cursor in the beginning of the document, just so you can start at the beginning. 
if you have your cursor here in the middle, it's going to start there and then wrap back around to the beginning, which is not a problem by any definition, but uh, I don't know, it's inconsistent, I guess. So, find and replace. Where the heck is that? Well, I'm going to head on over to the Home tab in the Editing group, and there's that Replace button. You see, I hung out there for a minute before I clicked on it. I know you're watching this, so that should be easy for you to pause the video, but I'll still try and sit on things for a minute. So find what? We're finding violence and replacing it with kindness. All right, there's a couple ways you can do this. The responsible way to do this is to go like find next, and it'll go find the first instance of violence, and then you replace it. Because what you'll find when you do wholesale find and replace is that the words don't fit in the sentences uh, grammatically correctly. So you should look at everyone individually and go, oh, I'm going to replace that one, then go to the next one. But in this class, we are learning about being efficient. And uh, so I can almost guarantee you that in this class, you're always going to be doing an old replace all. Right? That did 10 of them. See, that's a time saver. And then whatever, at some point they're all closed, and I can close this. And that was step three. That's find and replace. Step four, set the margins for the document to narrow. All right, so what tab is that under? Now, you should be panicking a little bit right now if you're like, well, how does he know what tab it's under? Well, because I've done this many times. Uh, I want to remind you that your quizzes and what you do in this class is open resource. So you'd be best served to try and memorize where some things are or at least get a good feel for it like if we're messing with margins that's like that that's the layout or the design of the document i don't know it's probably pretty easy to understand why that might not be under insert is it under design oh, no it's not is it under layout yes it is there's margins you could look up on a google search where is the thing in word you you could if you had to or you could just try and remember a few things i really while there are hundreds of buttons, I don't uh, have any intention of making you use all all of them. We use a lot of the Home tab. Oh, sometimes we use the Insert tab. We use a lot of the Layout tab. Uh, references when applicable. Review is for spell checks. We don't really use the View tab and the Mailing tab. And even References is pretty specific. So while this looks intimidating, it's not as bad as it seems like. Anyways, we're doing a narrow. You see, this is me trying to like connect with you all. Because it doesn't make any sense to lecture about Word because it's ridiculous, right? It, everything is like uh, needs to be applied to a very specific scenario. So just talking about it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this lab and the solution is the best I can do of just talking to you about things. All right, so those are my margins, right? That increases the printable area of my page. Next, set the text for the entire document. All right, so I think step 5A is the hardest one, I think, just because people don't understand it very well. Line spacing is something that everyone knows about because you don't have to double space your essays, but paragraph spacing, eh? That's one that people don't understand, and that is one that uh, you should understand because it can help you a lot. So select the text for the entire document. All right, what's the best way to select the text for the entire document? It's probably not a big click and drag, this works fine when it all fits on my screen, but what if it's a 10-page document? I do not recommend a scrolling click and drag. So there's tricks like Control A. A is for all. That'll give you all the text in the document. Another thing you can do, see this margin right here? Triple click in the margin. That selects all the text in the document. I don't care how you select all the text in the document. Do it how you want to do it. There's other ways of doing it. But for me, uh, I like those shortcuts. I hate keyboard shortcuts as a teacher because they make for a very poor uh, demonstration, but Control A is a good one. All right, so I've selected everything. That was like 5, 5A. Five Set the paragraph spacing. What the heck's paragraph spacing? Well, it's that thing right there on the layout tab, actually. I could, and you notice how it's blank, blank? That means that there's non-uniform settings at the moment. If that doesn't mean anything to you, well, I, I, it doesn't matter because you know, it doesn't need to. All right, so I could do this off the layout, layout layout tab and uh, this isn't I do like to do it this way but I'm going to show you another way to do it on the home tab in the paragraph group see that thing right there that's called a dialog box launcher you click that and that gives you paragraph properties I think you should be familiar with this because there's going to be it's like a guarantee that on everything I ever ask you to do there's going to be some you're going to have to take a trip in here and do some things um, 
like these indentations are useful special is useful for a first line indent you play around with it if you want to know what it means i'm not having you do it here but first line indent is like you know you tab the first line of a paragraph sometimes to indent it it's that thing so those are important there's line spacing there's before and after these things are uh, called spinning up and spinning down i said zero before and six after so you notice i pressed up to make it zero which is weird that's what happens when it's blank. You press zero, and then it's that, and then there's six. That's zero, six. That's zero before, six after. I go, okay, and what'd that do? Well, it changed the spacing between the paragraphs. It actually shrunk the document. And in and so this is an interesting point I'm going to make here. Uh, in a writing class, you're probably just sitting there, like, trying to make it span a page or more than a spa page because there's some expectation of pages being when you're done. In this class, we are usually trying to make things fit on fewer pages. So pulling out that paragraph spacing is oftentimes what makes it fit. All right, so that was 5A. And I also want to show you on the Layout tab, you see how it's reflected there? I also want to show you see this thing here in the Layout tab in the Paragraph group. See that Dialog Box Launcher? That's the same Dialog Box. That tells you how important it is. It's the only Dialog Box I know of that is uh, under two tabs. There's, there are probably others. I just don't think about it. Uh, set the line spacing to 1.15. All right, so there's a, definitely a best way to do this. Yes, you can do it in this dialog box here, but you see I don't exactly see that. You can type stuff in and make it happen, but I'm not a fan of that. I like to go to the Home tab. That right there is line and paragraph spacing. It's in the paragraph group. You pull that down, and there's your 1.15. What the heck is 1.15 spacing? Well, I don't care to explain it too much, but... What I will tell you is that 1.15 is the um, researchers have found that that's the best spacing, right? Too little spacing and it's hard to read the words, too much spacing and you're just wasting papers. Yes, I know that you double space things for writing classes, but that's so they have room for red ink. All right, the next part in this is probably the most interesting part, I'd say, and that is... Uh, inserting these three online pictures so this is each one of these is a little bit of a project in its own so think about what tab would that maybe be under i know you're new to this you'll get better but that sounds like an insert to me and here's online pictures this is what used to be called clip art kind of uh, so i'm gonna go bing image search you're just searching a search engine and what do these pictures need to be of uh it doesn't matter to me i'm gonna put in games but I don't really care what your pictures are of. I mean, I, I guess I do a little bit, but not very much. So let's say I want to do this one because I like this one. I insert. There's my picture. It's gigantic. That is very common. You just have to take a deep breath when you are inserting images. When I say insert three, it'd be pretty foolish to do all three. Why don't you just do one and work with it? And then once you get that one placed, do the rest. You could do all three, but it's going to be, I mean, if you think this is a mess, it's going to be even worse when there's three of them. So I've got my image selected. Notice I've got a, a new tab over here called Picture Tools. That's what you call a contextual tab. It only appears based on the context, right? If I click here, gone. Click here, it's back. Right? Contextual tab, tab which appears based on context. Under Picture Tools, right, it's kind of weird because it's Picture Tools format, which is just kind of weird. Um, really, the only stuff I care about is going to be over in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the width to 2 inches. Notice I've got width right here. What you should do is use the height and width. Type 2, press enter. There's your image. Notice that the height got uh, resized uh, to the same in the same proportion as the width. Uh, that's what you call constraining the proportions. That's always how you want to resize something. These are sizing handles here, these big white circles. You don't want to use those. That's how you skew an image. I'll show you what skewing an image looks like. That is skewing an image. There's no reason to do that unless you're just trying to be a goofball and like ruin a picture on purpose, but probably not. All right, the next thing is um, set the wrap text to either square tight or through. I mean that. Pick one. Square tight or through. They're all going to behave pretty similarly. If you want to mess around with them, go ahead. There's square. Uh, oops. Uh, oh my gosh, that was bad clicking. Uh, here's tight. Is that any different? I don't think it was. And there's through. Is that any different? I don't know. There, it might have been a little different. So it, it just depends. So once you've set the uh, wrap text and the size, then you can move it around wherever you want. It's 
put it over here somewhere. I said align it with the right margin. So there's the right margin. Um, so there's one, and then just wash, rinse, and repeat for the other two. So hopefully you can do those on your own. So you got to resize, you got to set the wrap text. That's just a given. If you can't move your images, it's because you didn't set the wrap text. There's really not any exceptions to that. I'm not going to talk too much. I'm just going to do it. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad that that happened. I can't make that happen if I try. That is what happens when, for some reason, the picture can't be inserted. Why can't it be inserted? I have no idea. Just pick another one. I don't know, right? Like, this is some image coming from the internet, and I don't know why uh, that happened, but it did happen, and sometimes that happens. It's pretty rare. All right, giant image. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, you make it two inches wide first, and things are better. Notice I can't really, it's not cooperating. You see this? It's like kind of moving, but not really moving. That always means the same thing. That means you haven't set your wrap text. Pick one, I don't care what one you do, and put it somewhere over here. Notice how when it gets up against the margin, I get that green line. That's cool, that's a very nice feature of Word. I'm gonna do one more, so insert online pictures, uh, games, I don't care what you search for. Oh, that thing looks cool, I guess. All right, so it looks ridiculous. It's overlapping another picture. Take a deep breath. No, you can do this, right? So width, two inches, set my wrap text to something, move it on over, and we're done with pictures. If you can manipulate pictures, uh, I'm just telling you right now that probably the biggest source of the most problems is people not being able to work with pictures. When you're working with pictures, it's all about wrap text, really. Sizing them, ultimately you can do that any number of ways, but uh, if you don't set the wrap text appropriately, you're not going to be able to manage your images. All right, we're getting almost done with this thing. So at the end of the document, we're going to make a bolded list. End of the document, where is that? Is that here? Is that here? Is that here? At this point, you might be wondering, well, how come I don't see those things? Well, the reason you don't see them is you don't have uh, hidden characters displayed. So under the Home tab in the Paragraph group, see that little thing right there? It's a paragraph symbol, but that means nothing because you either know what it is or you don't. But you should toggle it on and off. I'm telling you in this class, you should always have that on. I just have it on, so I take it for granted. At no point uh, have we needed it until now. Right, without it, it's like, well, where's the end of the document? How do, what, what, why can I click there? Well, this is how you can tell what's really going on. So, end of the document, is that there or is that there? I don't care where you put it, it's somewhere around here. And sometimes when that document spans an extra page, just telling you, let's say we needed this to be a page and we don't, I just deleted one of those paragraph marks. Yeah, you bet you a bunch of empty paragraphs at the end of the document will push this to another page. Anyways, my list, so. Why gaming is good. That's my title. Then down in here, I'm going to do a bolded list. So, uh, improved finger strength. Um, I don't know. I'm coming up with three things. You should write your own three things. I'm not a, I'm not a magic idea person. I don't have good ideas about this. Uh, good eye stuff. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what you write. Uh, good for social skills. All right, whatever. I came up with three things. I want to make these things into a bolded list. So let's talk about how to do that. So this title here is not, um, that does not belong in the list. That stuff does though. So I selected it with a click and a drag. I don't know how else you'd want to do that. And now it's a plain Jane bulleted list. I'm asking you to not do a plain bolded list, though. So if you want not plain bullets, here's where we point out that this button actually has a right and a left. On the right, there's this arrow. I said we're going to find new bullet. Sure, those are those are some options. You can go to find new bullet. You could do whatever you want, really, but I'm asking you to go picture. And then that brings us back to this, this image search. I'm going to tell you the best bullet in the whole world is a Pac-Man. That's pro tip right there. So insert, okay, now I got Pac-Man bullets. And I also, so here's the weird thing, like depending on your pictures, 
I don't know how your text is going to align. Your d bullets might be split across this second page. Because I set the width to two inches, but it's possible that your images are bigger than mine or that things just align differently. So if this spans onto a second page, I don't care at all. But given the fact that this doesn't span to a second page, I'm going to place my cursor right there and I'm, plus, I'm pressing delete. And then I made this all fit on one page. I'm not saying that you need to do that because I think your document probably will span to two pages. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you clean things up. And for the last step, let's do a header on this document. And so for a header, I am going to show you the, there's kind of a couple ways of doing it. I'm only going to show you the way that I like to do it. You're going to come across the other way in your sound trainings and stuff. Uh, I don't like navigating the ribbon if I don't have to. So you see this upper margin here? If you double click on the upper margin, you're, you're editing your header. And the, so that's quick. Like I don't have to go looking for it. I don't have to switch tabs, but it's also very useful because uh, I'm creating a custom header, which is what you're going to need. And so for my header, it's going to be my name on the left and the page number on the right and the date in the middle. So here's how you navigate around a header. You do what you're going to do. You press tab, tab takes you to the middle that was the tab key. And if I'm doing uh, date and time, I'm going to use the, the controls. So if there's a control for it or a button up here in header and footer tools, you should always use that. There was no button that was going to give me Ken Sword out. Well, actually there might have been, but like date and time, I'm going to click date and time. Then you have all these different formats here. I don't care what format you pick. I click OK. Then if I want to go to the right, I'm going to tab again. And I want to do the page number. I'm telling you that you absolutely do not want to do that. That's going to have every page saying one. You don't want that. I'm going to show you another thing you don't want to do. So page number is the tool. You're, I know if you're a human, you're going to do this. Everyone does the same thing. They always go top of page. And you do that, right? That looks like the right one. I'm telling you right now that is not what you want. When you do that, it eats up your entire header. Why does it do that? Oh, I don't know. It probably shouldn't do that, but that is what it does. I'm going to undo that. I'm telling you, if you want to do this, you need to go page number. You just go current position. And it looks like it's going to be left aligned, but it's not. It's going to go wherever you want it. That's using a tool instead of typing it out. right? So I had to go page number. I had to go current position. And then whatever option you want to do. That's how you do a header. And when you're done with your header, you could either click that thing or you could double click in the document and you're out, right? Double click in, double click out, double click in, double click out. Same is true for footers. Double click in, double click out. That's the easiest way to do it. You can do it other ways if you want. And you notice that now my header pushed, split my list across two pages, which I prefer because I could just see you folks at home like trying to get your stuff to line up exactly like mine. It doesn't have to line up exactly like mine. I don't, I don't care. And... Uh, so since we already spanned to a new page, let's do the last step, which is make this look kind of like a title. This is one of the easiest steps. I could have led with this, but I'm closing with it. Make you feel good about where you're at. So uh, select this paragraph. Yes, this is a paragraph. It's a paragraph because it has a paragraph mark. You need to abandon the idea of paragraphs, you know, having the properties of a paragraph for a writing class. That's a paragraph. Uh, that is a paragraph. All right, so select this paragraph. Let's go ahead and bold it. Let's go ahead and uh, increase the font size a couple levels up to 16. Let's go ahead and center it. And let's go ahead and apply a font color to it. I don't care what color you pick. There you go, now it looks something like a title. Like I said, we ended on something easy. That's probably, I don't know, I think that's probably a good move. All right, so that's the lab. So notice that I dragged you around the ribbon a fair amount. Uh, it's important to understand that there's quite a few ways of, of getting things done in the world of Office. Like there's different ways you could have formatted things. You notice I don't right click a lot. I think it's a good idea to try to avoid right clicks because every minute you spend familiarizing yourself with the ribbon is going to make you better at all of Office. Whereas right clicks are kind of more like crossing your fingers and hoping that you get the option that you're looking for, which is not the most sustainable plan. Uh, so when you're done, save this thing. 
put your name on it and submit it through Blackboard. Thanks for watching.